Hey, down here. Okay, we're back after fiddling around forever on trying to get uh, Tiger VNC to work. Making sure that my stream is working and everything. And um, <clears throat> I'll go back to the desktop because I thought, you know what? I really didn't do a real search. Uh, try hard. You know, I didn't. Uh, I just read over. This is the same page. I already did it. Uh, where you went to download and I did a search on the page with my you know find function there guess what there still is a portable team viewer there it is right there team viewer portable that's all I've been needing well there's only one offer though this may not be the 64-bit version we'll see maybe it'll run in both Team Viewer Portable. Let's make sure it's, uh, but that's on the same page. You went going back up to the top there. That's the whole main download, Team Viewer Downloads page. Yeah, it's done downloading. Okay. Um, I already left the, yeah, it still does that. And when I'm recording with OBS Studio, that's when it starts, uh, Crusader starts using up lots of processing power. Uh, if it all, if, I don't think it used to do that. I think it just started that in the, this week. I don't know what's happened there, but uh, so I'm gonna close the. Well, I'll just close the browser too. That way the machine has a lot less to do. And uh, first, I'm gonna go over here and make sure I get it copied over. Oh, I've got it unplugged. I unplugged my backup drive because I didn't want it. It take it waits about 10, 20 minutes after I boot up, I think, and then it takes ten minutes or yeah, you know, about ten minutes to finish uh, backing everything up. And if I wait, you know, I'd have been, you know, that's at least thirty minutes. And so I thought, well, I don't want to wait that long, so I just unplugged it. It won't run then. So I'll just copy this over to my SD card, and then uh, later I'll have to move it over to uh, the right spot on my backup drive. <clears throat> okay, am I on desktop even? Yes, okay, good. Good. Okay. Um now I'm in my download, so let's get on that SD card. Put that in my team viewer folder. It's it right there. And I want 13 this time. It doesn't say that it's 13 or 12 or whatever, but I'm going to hope that that's what it is. It'll put copy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, 12, I had a, a, a portable version somewhere in there. I believe. No, maybe not. I'll just search for port and see. Oh, case sensitive. Of course, that came up a bunch. Try one more time. Okay. That's one thing that drives me crazy about Crusaders. Okay, no, it doesn't seem to be in there. Maybe I don't. I, I had a portable version, I thought. That's too many lines for me to try to read through and find it. I don't terrible my eyes just don't do that well they never have ever since i was a little kid um team viewer portable now i've got one so uh let's see if i can get that to run over there and unless it squawks about the you know it's a 32-bit i know the old one was a 32-bit and it wouldn't run uh, on anything but 32-bit at least that's what i think i remember okay um am i got anything else to do on this machine well i want to unmount the and get it over there and I kind of thought well maybe I should uh, I didn't boot I still didn't re you know boot up the um, the uh, mom's machine uh, because I need to have my KVM switch on it the whole time it's booting for the display to be right So now I can boot it up. 
and once it gets all booted up, then I can pop my little um, SD card on the USB adapter in there. And uh, I'll be good. I'm also looking. Oh, okay. There we go. I was checking my stream to <clears throat> make sure that my switches are good and I didn't sw switch the wrong way. Um, yeah, it's, ki it's uh, it kind of crazy, really, that just that preview window, you know, or any of the ad really any admin page uh, on YouTube uses a lot more, even more resources than a playing page, and so uh, it would it'll even. Uh, you know, uh, where I fill up my memory cache and whatever, you know, everything on my quad core with four quick gig of RAM uh, pretty darn quick. Well, I think it's the video memory mostly that gets filled up because, uh, for instance, this machine that, that I'm mom's machine is only a dual core, but it, ha and it has two gig of RAM, but it has 512 megabyte uh, dedicated video card. Well, the machine I'm using is a quad core with four gig of RAM, but it only has 256 megabyte of shared memory, you know, it, especially in the processor this is basically a laptop in a box it's lenovo i5 it's it's a it's not even a separate uh, video processor chip like they used to do it is a uh, on the board it is uh, shared in the processor the main processor the cpu that's the way they went you know a few years ago and uh, so it's a intel i5 processor that really is, was uh, basically designed for laptops and I mean laptop processors are fine you know but 256 is like the lowest end of I mean this machine was not for this is for commercial for business use you know it's not meant to be used for watching videos and stuff like that but it will do it but you got to reboot it if you watch videos for a couple of hours you're gonna have to reboot the machine or if you stream I rebooted it I rebooted everything on my phones uh, my laptop this while I was on my little break so that everything would be refreshed. <clears throat> uh, it actually uses a lot less of my resources to stream than it does to uh, watch videos. But uh, still, I want to make sure <coughs> everything's okay. <coughs> so, now let me put that thing in there. It was just far enough that I couldn't see it. I finally had to move it where I could see it. Okay, now. I boot it up. My preview over there shows a black screen, but that's because I paused it before it got to where you could see. So I have to give myself a little peace of mind and uh, reload it again. Okay, uh... Okay, that's mounted up. Let's just open that up. The 32 gigabyte SD card. <clears throat> Go to my files. And I want to add team viewer. Oh yeah, all of my settings are lost because I want to default to list view. And I want to show hidden and backup files. That way I can see the dot folders and everything. Now, I'm going to close it and open it back up. I think it'll be, everything will be opened up the way I like it now. Yeah, should be. Okay. I see my previews kind of somewhere near where I'm at. Let's make sure. What did I just do? I tried to unmute the voice, and I think I turned it all the way down. Okay, now. <clears throat> uh, downloads. Team Viewer, 13, now then, Portable, where is it, there it is, it's in a zip file, so let's see what it looks like here, this is not one that's going to run on uh, Linux, this is Windows, Maybe they don't have one on this version.
Yeah, this is a Windows app. That's not going to work. Oh, that's a... I got to rename that so I don't forget which one it is. Windows. I think I can do that. Yeah, let me do it. Okay. <clears throat> um, I really I don't give a... You know, I mean, I've been using TeamViewer 12 and everything's fine with it. Let's see if I have a... This has got a little bit less stuff on it. Uh, oh, yeah, there wasn't a dedicated portable mode for Linux. You could just unzip it and run it. But they're all I-386. That's the problem with that. Okay. Why do I have two of them? Oh, they're different versions of 12. There's an earlier and newer version of 12. Okay. Yeah, I have a little screenshot in there telling me what to do. There's an English, uh, uh, Windows one right there. <clears throat> so, I think the first, you know, and in a way, this is probably was the first thing I kind of thought of doing. Let's see. Um, and I kept thinking, let's try this. I kept thinking that I couldn't even use uh, Dragora at all, DNF Dragora. Because of the errors that I saw when I tried to open up that RPM <clears throat> to install with it. But actually, when I really looked at them, I wasn't paying enough attention. When I got to look at them, I think it was only in errors about um, today. Anyway, when I looked at them again, I said, wait a minute, those are just errors about trying to run that RPM. So, Dragora DNF may work uh, after all. In the live version, sometimes, sometimes I've had them for, um, in Fedora. I've had them, uh, <clears throat> from what I remember, I've had it where you know you could use like the older versions, especially you could use when they used Apper for the package manager. You could install or uninstall all you want until you fill up your memory. I did it just trying to do different things. Uh, after a while, the machine will just lock up. When the memory gets full, you'll find out real quick. <clears throat> of course, it's live and it doesn't hurt anything. Unless, of course, you were... I wouldn't do any important process that way, you know, like uh, trying to recover, you know, a lost system or something like that. But uh, then, I don't know, when they, when you had to use Yum Extender, like saying for Door 23, I'm not so sure. I can't remember if you could run it or not. And now there's DNF. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, as soon as this gets through updating, it, you know, looking for updates, looking for updates is what it's doing, and I'm not getting any errors yet, so there probably would be a bunch of updates, but I don't want to, of course, install those in the live system, but it's what it defaults to looking for updates. That's what it does when you open it up. Well, I mean, you could change that, but it's really a good thing anyway. There we go. Now, yeah, see all these with the on the right there. Uh, they could be updated with little blue arrows on them, <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that now. Now let me look. Okay, now in the search thing, you need to... This is all different. Search in names. No, I want to search in descriptions is better. In file names, in summaries, descriptions. Then I'll be more likely to find what I want. KRFB, that is the... Uh, the only GUI left that I can find, is it searching? Maybe you have to hit, I can hit enter twice, it didn't do nothing. I guess you've got to click on search. Either that or it's already done searching and it's not finding anything. Oh, well, I, maybe I have to change it to all. There we go. Now, I don't think it'll search until you hit the search button. Well, maybe it's searching. Oh, it's not full loading up. i got to change that view. This DNF drag or thing is a lot different than Yum, Yum, uh, Yum X, Yum Extender DNF that I've been using in Fedora 23. So it throws me around in circles. Okay, there we go. KRFB libs. What? Well, all the same thing. KRFB libs. KRFB libs. Doesn't have. 
Let's see. File names, summaries. Let's try just in names again. See if that actually does me better. Oh. Yeah, maybe it did. Yeah, it did. Okay. Maybe that's the way to leave it. Okay. Um, they're both x86-64. Oh, 1712 and 1708. So we want 1712. So it looks like we can install it. So let's just install it and uh, apply down here. Well, it's going to put in plenty of other stuff. I knew it would need a lot of dependencies. 17 megabytes, so that's not a big deal. From what I remember, I'm still going to have to install a server. So I'll, uh, on my Fedora 23 machine, I think it is, or one of my machines, might have been, it may be one of the Dell, uh, De Debane desktop uh, laptops, I have I have on there Vino, which is the, the the VNC server I always used to use. It worked really well and smooth. And I also have Tiger VNC, which is the one that really does lag pretty badly most of the almost on everything. Uh, it's not my, really my last choice. So if it doesn't, and what I haven't quite figured out because I usually already had those one or both of those installed before I installed uh, KRFB. I don't know if KRFB has a server along with it or not. Uh, so I'm going to open it up, see if I have a server running. And if I do, then, and it works, good. If not, then I'll install Vino. And um, this, this, if this works real easy, I'm going to kick myself for the two, two, two days that I missed with the other way around. Um, just, uh, well, for one thing, I think got myself mixed up yesterday, or the day before yesterday, actually, because I didn't actually work on a machine yesterday. Uh, that error when I tried to install from the RPM, I just kept thinking, well, you know, really the most trouble-free one is, uh, and, the, and the smoothest operating one nowadays is Team Viewer. Uh, so I started with that, and then somehow I got off into the Tiger VNC because it was already on my SD card. And, and it, I keep forgetting the details just now. I, I downloaded that, and flipped it over on that stick i'm trying to hurry is the thing and what happens when you <clears throat> always trying to hurry you usually spend three times more time doing stuff okay uh is it not installed or what it's quit act, act doing anything but uh doesn't show green like it's installed well let's go see i think it may be There it is. Well, that looks completely different. <clears throat> See if it'll run. Maybe it's not actually. There it is. Okay. Yeah, the KDE wallet. Okay. Uh, I don't think you can do it without. I don't have any encryption keys. Okay. Okay, I think it'll still run. I just, uh, it'll just keep bugging me. And I'll give it a, uh, give it a password for non, uh, you know, you don't have to give it permission to uh, <clears throat> to get on there. Now, 171, 5900. Now, let's go see if uh, I can get on it. Let's see. What's the, yeah, I guess the best thing to do is just go try it from my machine. After I open up the firewall port, I remembered it. I'm, I'm just about, I'm almost certain you always have to do that. Some apps will uh, ask you, do you want, you know, the, the app to open up a firewall port, and you can say yes, but some of these VNC apps, but there we go, VNC server, and <clears throat> I'm going to say VNC is trusted just because um, I want to make sure it works. Okay. Runtime to permanent. That's fine. <clears throat> okay, now.
My switch is not cooperating. It won't stop where I want it to. There, it's been doing that. <coughs> been doing that for years and years. <coughs> And it might have something to do with the fact that I'm reaching way up under there with the pencil, but it already started doing it back when I used to have it out where I could do it with my finger, you know. Anyway, kill a desktop now. Oh, my preview's still playing over there, and I forgot. So let's... Uh, yeah, it looks like it's all okay, though. <clears throat> Working that poor little old laptop. Now I'm going to try the... Uh, viewer that I like look at that don't need to add an extra server or anything I kept thinking maybe I ought to try that first but I thought oh no that's too much stuff to install in memory okay what's that password my gosh I feel like a goofball now and, and and you know you can say well you learn you know learning experience thing is I keep forgetting everything I learned after a while and I'll try to try sometimes I'll try the same thing over again I'll get that deja vu feeling and I'll go oh no okay let's see fit and then I can do full screen I can get out right okay let's see now I'm on desktop okay so yes finally oh man that's just like so I'm just pissed now because it was so, so hard for nothing. That's all I had to do. So if you're in Fedora 27 and you want to do remote desktop, just go straight to Dragor DNF and just install KRFB for whatever architecture your machine is. It's a KDE desktop sharing app, and you can use it to turn on uh, the server, everything. Put your little password in there, and you're ready to go. Put that all the way in the back workspace there. <clears throat> Leave it like that. That way I'll know there's something over there. Okay, so what do I want to do now? I want to install. First, I want to take this SD card out because I don't want it to be part of the system. Now safe to remove your drive. Okay. <clears throat> getting pretty hot well it's actually it was 70 been 79.8 for a while here in my room with my little thermometer there not 79.7 but still hot got the window wide open and the the uh fan going but it's uh it's probably what is it outside the sun hasn't hit my thermometer yet my, if it hits my window then it's always like it can get 10 degrees off but it hasn't quite come up yet now, what do I want to do? Okay. There's two things, two ways that I can go about this. <clears throat> it's only 68.9 right now. Let's leave it for a little longer. It takes a while to kind of settle in uh, outside. So it should be so nice in here. Okay. Uh, yeah, all these computers I got running, it won't let that happen. Install the hard drive. I'm just going to click on that. Um, I don't want to go halfway through it and then start over. That's the thing. Uh, I'm going to divide this this two terabyte hard drive in three partition main partitions, and then they'll kind of have their sub partitions. I'd I'll say. Uh, now I can just go through this. I think I will. And if it, um, I just stop before the. If I run into trouble with the partitioning, so I can just hit enter on the keyboard. I think. Well, I'll use the mouse, that way you can see what I'm doing. I hit continue. Uh, English. Okay, now, there we go. Very next thing, you're gonna, you need uh, the destination. So, <clears throat> we don't want to put it on the SanDisk Cruiser pattern. We want to put it on the 1.82 terabyte hard drive. Okay. Now then, specialized uh, network disks. No, we're not going to do any of that. Storage configuration. Automatic. Uh... And you've got automatic, custom, advanced, custom, Blivet GUI. I haven't used that. I think I might have looked at it before. I would like to make additional space available. Now, that's what you might need to do. 
got to be really careful if you're you know, like going to do a Windows dual boot system. But by the way, if you're going to do Windows and Linux dual boot system, you do need Windows already. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to have Windows on there already, up and running good, and then uh, either use Party Magic or something to resize your partitions. But they always say, recommend to defrag your Windows system first because Windows 7 will break when if you uh, resize it with, without defragging it. And sometimes it'll kind of get jacked up anyway but you can fix it when you get back in there in, in a wind you know back but you might have to use the windows rescue disk or something to fix it and if you do that after you got fedora installed you'll break your bootloader so try to be pre if you get it like the last time i did it and uh, we actually had a windows 10 system that crashed completely with a windows update that broke it it wasn't mine it was somebody else's and so and they wanted to go ahead and do both so because uh, they've been using linux too over the years you know uh, so we install windows 10 first and left em empty what you can do is you can partition it all uh just depending on what's easiest but like partition half of the drive in ntfs and the other half empty or ext4 it usually turns out to be easier to not leave it empty but to put some some kind of partition in that if that space and I can't remember the details on how we did it, but we did Windows first, and then we installed Fedora 26, I think. And it went off without a hitch, <clears throat> and we got our, you know, dual boot, boot, dual boot system with uh, Grub bootloader and everything with no problems. Um, and I've been doing it for years. It's, it changed, you know, different ins and outs changed over the years. But right now, or, you know, at least as of, we're fixing to find, I'm fixing to find out in for Fedora 27 if anything's changed. Uh, that anyway, I would like to make additional space available. Now that used to didn't work very well, but I think it does now. Like if say if you're on a Windows system or a Linux system and you just wanted it to automatically, uh, well not automatically, but you tell it what you want to delete and what you want to move around and all that stuff. And then there's a crypt my data. I did that once, and it was such a pain having to log in to, to uh, yeah to. You had to have your data log in and your user log in, and then every time it went to sleep or anything, you had to do it again, and it just drove me crazy. Plus, if you ever do get your system broke to where that login part there don't work for your data, you're not going to get your data back any any time easy. So I decided, you know, since I don't have people here that can get you know bad actors that can get access to my machine, then I won't I won't do it. You know, there is always the chance that, I mean, with Windows, it's a big, been a big problem. But with Linux, it hasn't yet been a big problem. But there is that chance of some, uh, you know, Trojan or something that could, uh, you know, encrypt your unencrypted drive. Uh, and then you can't get it, your, your stuff and everything. But uh, so far, so good. But we may all have to start doing that before we know it. But anyway, um, encrypting everything, I mean, our drives and everything. Because um, keep somebody else from doing it to you. <clears throat> if it starts being a problem in Linux, then, of course, you might find, I might find out the hard way is the only thing. But if it starts being a big problem in Linux, then I, I would do it. Even though it's, uh, it's more of a, quite a bit of a pain to work with drives like that you can't just like how i was just popping this sd card in there and this usb you stick in the over there you know you you can't do that with them encrypted drives so easily you know um can't write to them you know so easily and so all that stuff copy from them all right so uh i actually don't know that blivet gui might be the one i want but uh, i'm gonna say I want automatic. This is an empty drive. It hasn't been formatted. Brand new drive. But I want to divide it up in three. I'm going to start out by, I'll, I'll probably do just three XT partitions. And then later, I will, um, well, I might not do that. I may just, I'll figure out what, what dividing it up in three will be, uh, you know, in sizes. And then I'm going to have the first, uh, I want the first one and the backup to be about the same size. Because the first one will have the operating system, and that'll take up space. And then the backup will actually, in effect, be larger because uh, it won't have the operating system on it. It'll just have her files and stuff. And then the Fedora 14, I'm going to use uh, CloneZilla. I thought, well, I'm going to do that last because I want to make sure this Fedora 27 will even run good on here. So 
Um, I thought about doing it first, you know, um, but then I thought, no, because that would make, then when I was done, my grub bootloader would be installed and it would find the Fedora 14 and everything would be great. And I, but then I thought, wait a minute, what if this doesn't work so well? So I'm going to do Fedora 27, make sure it runs good. And then I'll put my, I'll use Clonezilla probably to make an image of the Fedora 14 boot partition and the rest and the other main partition and everything. And, uh, I won't have to do another swap. The, the, it can just share the swap that I get from installing this swap partition. So um, it says advanced, but that may be just what I want. Let's go to custom first just to see. Now, where's the, oh yeah, you have to go back over to the top left. You know, the, the OK and do it buttons are usually always on the bottom, middle, or the right, bottom right. And this one, it's in the top left. I don't know why. Uh, those people must be more dyslexic than me, but uh, <clears throat> it made this. It, ever since they started that, it just bugs the heck out of me. Okay, um, available space, total space, 1.82 gigabyte. I um, think that's not the one I want. You haven't created any mount points, yeah, so on and so forth. Okay, so... Uh, Reset all. This is not actually fitting the screen right, is it? I'm going to go off of this on my KVM switch and back, and it should fix that. Or actually, I'll turn the monitor on and off first and see. Oh, wait. Yeah, that should still do it. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot. I'm not using the KVM switch to, act to access it. I'm in uh, still what I'm going to have to do. Um, in the remote desktop. Maybe that'll make it fit. Okay, I'm actually on that machine now. Of course, to you it still looks the same. It didn't make it fit. I'll go to my server and see. It didn't have to adjust it. It may not be uh, going to work. <laughs> Let's get out of the full screen and see. Yeah, mine is fit just fine. So it's just something to do with the way the remote desktop is sending it over. So I'm going to not worry about it. But uh, so a little bit of it's cut off and I can't get it to quit. That's going to be too hard for me. I don't want to do it that way. Reset all done. I'm going to hit done, I think. No, error checking storage configuration. Click for details. Reset all. Reset selections. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's not helping. I just want to get out of it now because I'm going to go ahead and use part of magic. If I could go back, I would just to see what that other option was. But it's not letting me go back. Maybe because I didn't really do anything. Click here to create them automatically. I'll do that because I'm not going to do it. Okay, see, now you got your home. Fedora root, uh, boot, and swap. Now, I could go in here and change the sizes on them and stuff, but it's really easier to um, just, like I said, I can make three EXT4 partitions and then say, okay, I want you to use all of this EXT4, the first one, SDA, it would be, you know. Um, so I'm going to say done and see if I can get back to that. I don't think I can get back to that other menu. Let's see. There's one spot there where you need a label, it looks like. Oh, it just was taking a while. Cancel and then go back to... Oh, okay. It seems to have a whole bunch of extra junk going. So, hit cancel. Reset all. I think it's just taking a while to answer back it does that anyway and i keep forgetting you know it seems like it's working so well i forget i'm on remote desktop <clears throat> okay um this time i can see the the little gray in the bottom right you know and the gray at the bottom and the left there reset selections yeah it's taking a while 
Okay, so I think I'm just going to have to close the installer. <clears throat> and I am curious as to what that Blivet Advanced is, but it may be super advanced. It can get really complicated. And then again, it might be more of what I'm used to doing. Um, but I don't... I don't see a way to get out of here now. Kind of stuck at either answering its questions or... One point, oh, home would be 1.7. See, that's using the whole drive, <coughs> which is not what I want. And, you, and one thing about Fedora, it can really make a big root partition. And if you got a small drive, it'll use up so much space you won't have enough to work with. But if you, one time I thought, oh, I'll get smart and I'll change this to a smaller size. Well, I filled it up in no time because I kept installing apps. So <laughs> uh, 50 gigabyte compared to 1.77 terabyte, that's not, I mean, uh, um, 1.77? Yeah, I guess so. Um, 50 gigabytes might not be big enough for me the way I install stuff, yeah, actually. But, uh, and it is really hard to, I've never actually done it, but you can resize your root partition, you know, after you've already built a system, but it's hard. So, um, I saw some app. Well, actually, there's one that I put on my Fedora 20, 23 system. It's called Auto Root Resizer, but it fails on boot. It won't work. So I don't know why. I didn't ever try to fix it. But uh, yeah, there's no like back or anything here. Hit done. It doesn't go anywhere. There's not even a close. And I'm trying, I'm hoping not to have to cancel or return to cut. Uh, custom part. I'm going to hit accept changes and then see if I can go back or just exit the installer. If I can e get a clean exit, because if I have to reboot, i got to reinstall my remote desktop app and all that. Okay, quit. Either that or yeah, or begin installation. See, you're ready to start. I mean, now a couple of things I would do is give it a host name, make the time. Well, that's my time zone. That's already what I want. Keyboard's already what I want. So the only thing I'd have to change is give it a host name. I'm going to hit quit the installation. Yeah, my remote desktop's not not so happy right now. Yes, quit it. It's not. Uh, I was fixing to say, boy, this is working great, but it's it's beginning to lag a little bit. So, um, as since it's lagging, I'm going to disconnect and then I'll reconnect. Oh, I am using the one that doesn't uh, does do that more. The one that I like the best. Okay, um, give that a second to like clear out its whatever it's got running there. Um, so I think I'm going to go the parted magic route. It says 69.1 outside, so that's probably uh, the sun hasn't come up enough to heat that sensor up outside the window there. So I imagine that's right. 69. Okay, so <clears throat> oh, I was checking my stream again. Um, much as I really hate to, I'm going to go ahead and open it up with this one, this other viewer. Okay. Uh, it wasn't, at least I know it's not hard to get all that going again if I do find out that I'm going to have to reboot. Well, you know, I set that to fit uh, my, I set in the settings in that, uh, Tiger VNC viewer. I saw a setting that said match whatever your desktop is that you're viewing on, and it did. It worked. So now, I don't think you can do. Yeah, you can't make it full screen though. And it does cut a little bit out. The other one definitely is a lot better. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. I guess that's why I had it set to a certain resolution because I wanted it to fit inside of the window without me having to page because that's just really a pain. Uh, but let's see if we can get by with it like that. Um, so, because if I don't have to, if I, I'm going to open up Gparted. If I don't, uh, I don't usually use Gparted in full screen size anyway, so I think it might be all right. Okay, Dev SDA, Fedora Mate Live. We don't want that. That's what we're running off of. We want Dev SDB. It'll end up being SDA, unallocated. Okay, so 1.82 gigabytes. Uh, 
information. Eh, it's not telling me. A lot of times it'll tell you in megabytes or something. I think I can still do it, though, with my calculator. <clears throat> I guess that'll be just fine. Wait, let's see. Um, create. Okay, yeah, it needs a partition table. Device, create a partition table. First, we need to do that. Create a partition table. Now, now of course, if, if there was anything on that drive, don't do that because it's going to, you know, warning, this will erase all data on the disk. There's no data on the disk, so that's not a problem. And uh, MS-DOS, the default partition type, you've got the other part, you know, you can do Atari, uh, AIX, Amiga, BSD, DVH, GPT, Mac, MS-DOS, PC-98, Sun, or Loop. Well... Linux works with MS-DOS, so that's what we want. That's the default. Okay, now we have a partition table. Information. Uh, let's see. So what I'm thinking, okay, yeah. The size that it is, is um, in megabytes. That's a long number. <coughs> okay, um... The maximum size is 190. Okay, let's get this calculator up and running here. One, this is where I have trouble. Okay, 190. Oh, yeah, I never did change the font size or anything. That's one reason why it's small to me. One nine zero seven seven two eight. I better do it because it's just blurry. I can't see it good. Um, so if I just make that a little bigger, just by changing that theme helps a lot. Okay, traditional okay. That helps some. Fonts, make them all 11. And then everything will be just that much bigger to where I can read it. I already had my lunch, and I guess it's been so long now I'm getting hungry for supper. Yeah, it's 8.19, and I got up at midnight last night. 8.19 a.m. now. Okay, one nine zero seven seven two eight divided by... Th 3 equals, it's an even longer number. Is there a dot in there? Yeah. Okay. Two terabyte, vi terabyte drive is what? 1.82 terabytes. That's one nine zero seven seven two eight megabytes sometimes i put mib and sometimes they put which i found out is the proper way to write megabyte instead of mb like all the rest of the whole world does <coughs> uh one nine zero seven seven two eight okay now divided by Three equals six three five nine dot nine. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. It's dot nine zero nine three 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 three. Wait, let's write it out. I got room. Nine three 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 three. I hope that doesn't throw me off later. Zero nine dot nine zero nine dot nine zero. I already got it wrong. I looked away from the calculator to look down at my paper and I got it wrong. Dot. Gotta get my magnifying glass. My eyes are getting worse the harder I try. Oh, that's not a dot. Good thing I wrote it all down. That was a comma. 635, comma. I'm gonna leave that comma out of there. It's only gonna make me think it's a dot. 
I guess I'll put it as a comma. Yeah. If I make it a really big comma, I should understand it because there's just a big old wide space in there where I took that out. Okay. Now, I don't know how to convert that into gigabytes. And used to these, oh, yes, you can say align to gigabyte. No, you can't. Megabyte, cylinder, or none. In case I can't do that. Um, yeah, so I got to work with these big numbers. It's going to be hard. Um, <clears throat> It doesn't have to be divided in three equal spaces, but one nine zero seven seven two eight. One nine zero seven seven two eight. Okay, I got that right, I think. Six three five. Six three five nine nine oh nine. That's what I'm gonna shoot for. Now you can drag these and do it that way or you can actually you can use the up and down arrows which you'd never get there or you can just type in the space which is what I'm gonna go ahead and do I gotta find a place to set my calculator where I won't I'm trying to keep keep those numbers in it without it's a Solar calc it's an old solar TI solar calculator. Still works like it was brand new. This is when they made things that lasted. BA-35 solar. No batteries whatsoever. Yeah. <clears throat> was one of the first ones that came out. It was one of the first things that could do <laughs> didn't need any more power than it could do that. And it still blows my mind that after all these years, when did I buy this? The eighties or yeah, I bought it in the 80s because I was working at GD. I don't remember if it was, you know, I can't remember if it was 83, 85, 88 when I bought it. But I'm sure I could find the dates on it somewhere. But uh, <clears throat> oh, I figured in the next three to five years, we'd have all kinds of big, big, big things running on solar. And uh, shoot, you don't see anything that can really run on solar. And this is solar from the lights in the house. It doesn't have to be out in the sun. So uh, what is all this talk about? Maybe then you just need to start using those solar strips of the TI calculators to build our solar panels with. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, 63... Five nine six three five nine nine oh nine six three five nine wait a minute six three five nine oh nine six three five nine oh nine six three five there's two nines in there I thought that looked awfully weird Six three five nine. Oh, the harder I try to fix it, the messier it gets. Six three five nine oh nine. See, my I see double numbers and uh, and they swap places and everything when I look at stuff. It's not just blurry. It's just it's really hard. Six three five. 909. Sometimes when I look with one eye, it can help, but sometimes it doesn't help. 635 909 three, 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 three. 635 three. Okay. I could uh, try to look straight. Uh, it, the Display on the calculator is a little bit dark, and so 
if when I write it on my yellow sticky note, I can't see it better. But if I write it down wrong, it doesn't help me. Six three five nine zero oh, nine, and that's it. I'm not gonna do the dot three 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 three. I'll let that just trail out. Okay, let's see. Free space. Yeah, you need to leave that one megabyte of free space before and after each partition. Okay. Should have changed it already. There we go. You got to click in a different spot, and I clicked in the next one saying free space following, and uh, <clears throat> then it resizes it. And uh, I'll look at my preview. <coughs> and ext4 is well, it defaulted what this app defaults to, and so that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I wanted anyway. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> oh, I managed to get to hear some cough, hear myself cough again. It looks visually. I, I like the visual, you know, readout there of it. Uh, it looks visually like what I'm going to get up with three equal partitions. Six three five nine zero oh, nine. Now, oh, it cut instead of. It cut. I'm trying to copy it so I could have it in. Okay. Six three five nine oh nine. There. Just cl accidentally hit the. Uh, okay, but it fixed it. I accidentally hit the arrow button when I was trying to click in the other place. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna delete that whole bottom part and do it again because it'll you'll get screwed up. Oh, it made it go to the other end. Yeah, because of the way I did it. Now it's all screwed up. Well, I think if I drag this back to the beginning the way it was in the start, we can go back. Okay, there we go. Now. Instead of trying to use the uh, right click, I'll use my control V. There we go. 635-909. Okay. And whatever you know the free space, it doesn't matter as long as it comes out somewhat equal. Okay. E okay. Now we got a we got that one. It hasn't been done yet. But we're going cuz and we're going to want to do two more of them, so. So I'm going to get rid of those. Click in there and it should just figure itself out. Okay, and there, I mean, they're showing up to be this, uh, wait, yeah, and then there's the same amount, well, dot, uh, dot zero, dot one, and that's going to end up being my uh, backup partition, so I'm just going to leave it just like it is. It says, no free, oh yeah, I guess there's no free space on there, well, I'm going to leave it, uh, whatever it wants to do by default is usually okay, so. Can we look at the, yeah, we can look at the information. So it's 621 gigabyte, 621 gigabyte. First sector, 204A sector. Okay, and then I think the overall drive will still have that one megabyte at the beginning and the end. They need that to make them work right. They don't, if you take that, you can in some apps take that away and you'll kind of mess it up. the way it, It'll start getting read errors and stuff. And in the long run, it will <clears throat> can mess up your your operating system. So now the little check error box there, you do that, and it'll write it to it. Are you sure you want to apply this operation? Adding partitions has the potential to cause data loss, loss of data, or and uh, back it up. So I don't even have any other drive plug in there. <laughs> I had to look and see, make sure I didn't have any. USB stick or something in there. Well, I have the well, I do have the USB stick that it's running on. Of course, you got to have that to do to run live and do this. It's one nice thing about Fedora didn't used to put G parted in there, and I was always having to go and install it like I just did with uh, K or FB. Well, at least I learned something about K or FB. To get your remote desktop running, just install K or FB. So those other VNC servers that are on my uh, Fedora 23 system. 
could be why I'm having so much trouble with lag. They may all be uh, trying to serve up. They may be serving up the same desktop session on all three servers. And even though I'm not logging into them, they're being served and it's using up bandwidth and, and computer power, you know. Okay, so it all went successful. And you can drop down on these menus and see what it did. Uh, it says created empty partition, cleared old file system uh, signatures, set partition type, uh, create new ext4, and it should just be the same on each one. It just gives the name, say, dev sdb1, sdb2. Now that changes. Um, it's, it's SDB1 now in this live system, but whenever it boots up on its old si own system, that's unless something, unless I've already forgot another thing about how things work, which I don't think so, uh, it'll be dev SDA and then SDA1 and then SDA2. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I believe it will be. Uh, right now we have dev SDB, which is the whole drive. Okay, so it'll be the whole drive will be dev SDA, and then each partition will be one, two, and three. Okay, so that all worked. Now you have to re when you put new partitions on a drive, you have to reset it. I just thought of that. Uh, and when you're installing a new system like this, you, you know, the the installer may it may get by without doing that, but I don't want to take a chance. I want everything to work right. So it's there's a couple of if ands or buts, you know. I mean, I've just done it both ways, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I did read, you know, a bunch of stuff years ago about resetting the drive. Used to a lot of apps would tell you you now have to reset the drive. You know, re turn turn reboot the system. Of course, I don't necessarily want to do that right now because of having to reinstall, but that was really easy installing KRFB. So I'm just going to close this and uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to re remotely shut it down. I'm going to go over there and get on it and do it because um, I need it to be, uh, in order for my video resolution to be right it needs to see the monitor not just see the kvm switch so uh, <clears throat> i'm going to go ahead and get over there and reboot it oh but first but first i can close the, the this, this session though of the remote desktop session there we go now let's get over here on our cameras and this time i think i'll just get on Instead of showing myself, I'll just show just the screen. <clears throat> okay, so we should be showing you what I'm doing here. <clears throat> um, now, you can close that, but it won't go away. It'll still be running, that KRFB. So I think in this case, I'm just going to hit quit. I mean, it would shut it down when I rebooted the system, but I'm going to go ahead and do that and reboot. And then I'll be all fresh. Uh, you know, all that stuff I've been doing, I won't have any. And I kind of don't like when I start the installer. Let's hit restart. When I start the installer and then start it back up again, I'm always afraid of a little, you know, a possibility of uh, left behind tasks or files or cache or something causing me trouble. So, and like I said, I, I really want to reset the hard drive that since I put those new partitions on it. <clears throat> and so all that, I'm, you know, I'm going to go ahead. That's why I'm going ahead and rebooting the whole system. Um, and I hit the up arrow key and then clicked on boot, you know, and uh, let it go ahead and let it go ahead and uh, boot back up, and then I'll go ahead and reinstall KRFB and all that stuff. But uh, wow, I can't believe how easy that was, and that I kept that sort of kept. I got my preview playing over there. I might even be able to hear it. Um, it definitely threw my mind for a twi twizzle. Yeah, that's a word I just made up. No, it's not. That's a candy. Oh.
Well, twizzle. What's a tizzy and a tw- and a twi- and a tizzle put together? That's a twizzle. Put my mind in a twizzle. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> anyway, that'll that um, that sh- I think will make the system be able to you know the memory not get filled up or have any left behind stuff like I was saying, and. Uh, <clears throat> Still has that SRO error, but that's that's the USB stick, and I, I'm finally thinking. I've seen that many times back and forth. Always wondering what it was. You know, I think, uh oh, I'm in trouble because sometimes it is your hard drive. If you got a messed up hard drive, especially a completely broken one, Fedora will usually hang up and not even boot. Um. So, uh, but that. I, I think that's probably is logging in, hit, clicking the login button. Cause I guess you have to on Fedora 27 with Mate Desktop. <clears throat> um, anyway, I think that is probably that partition that can't be r- written or anything. It can be read, but it is it is a. Uh, I think it's FAT32. It might be NTF. It might be NTFS, and if it is, that might be for sure why it's acting crazy okay now let's just go ahead and before we do anything else well before we do anything else go into uh gregora i'll have to wait for it to check for updates and all that stuff and uh when it does i'll install uh krfb luckily i'm remembering that today without sometimes a week a few days to a week from now i, I can sink hard as i can and i can't remember What's the name of that app? Oh, now it's 80.2 degrees inside. That sun, when it gets up, I'm afraid it's going to get really hot in here. While it's doing its thing, I'm going to grab me a bit of a snack. Uh, I got... Got some little bitty Hershey's Kisses Nuggets. Now let me grab, and I got some cashew. <clears throat> For just such an occasion, I'm celebrating getting this, <laughs> figuring out how to do this. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I can't share it on with you because this is digital. This is not real. It's only a dream. I have no chocolate. You don't like chocolate. You don't want any chocolate. <sighs> okay, wake up. Ah, uh, here we go. I'll be getting salt on my fingers. But that's the price you got to pay for good cashews. Oh, it's not through yet. I thought it was waiting on me. Can't give anything to do till it's through doing what it wants to do. There. Now. No, it really won't search until you, you got to click on search. You can't hit enter on the keyboard. And in this thing, you've got to get out of the to update and go to, let's see, all, install, to update, not installed. You could go to not install, but I just always go to all that way. I don't get confused again. <clears throat> If everything's being showed, then then you got to wait for it to reload again. <clears throat> That's what I don't like about this setup in this Dragora.
And for some reason, there's two versions. <clears throat> <coughs> so, install the newest one with all its dependencies. It's still only 17 megabyte total, though. Now, you can't beat that for, you know, getting something like this to work easily. Well, is it done? I was looking down. I think it may be. <clears throat> Finish with my snack. But I'm trying to get the salt off my lips and everything. <laughs> and my fingers. <clears throat> These are low salt, but it still gets all over you. I can see my... I was doing, looking at my preview. <coughs> see my little hands moving. <coughs> moving around there. <coughs> Okay, as long as we're still streaming good. I won't close it until I'm sure, but I think it's already installed. I wish it had something to let you know. See, the thing is, you always know. We can't tell until you click off of it, but it's always green when it's installed in every other machine I've ever had, and red when there's an update. <clears throat> there's no color coding at all. Maybe you can turn it on and off in there. No, there's only three, a couple of preferences in there. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen any, seen them do. Okay, so um, system tools, I think, is where I found it. Yeah, KRFB. <clears throat> and I hope it works this time. <laughs> yeah, and I just tried to do that and I ended up canceling it it worked fine I mean it's live anyway it won't be there when I reboot anyway enable unattended access okay I'll make me a password and I'll go ahead and close that <clears throat> should be able to log in So far, so good. <clears throat> Desktop. And I'll go ahead and use Tiger VNC because it does. Oh. Unable to connect no route to host. What? Oh. No. Huh? 
How about this one? Oh, I didn't change the firewall. I had that feeling. Getting ahead of myself there. I switched over there, but I had changed the camera view. Excuse me. So, um, okay, let me get back over there. Okay, yeah, I'm all set up, it's all running. But if there was ever any doubt, yes, you do have to change the firewall. Hmm. And before I go any further, I'll go into preferences, look and feel, appearance, change it to the uh, traditional okay, so what I like, fonts, go to all do that again. things I go through just to make a video. Okay, <clears throat> now, I think all I really had to do was, I did two things. I clicked on VNC server, and then I did trusted VNC server. Probably not necessary. And then just for fun, just for good measure, I had sit uh, Runtime to permanent, but I'm only going to be in runtime because there's no such thing as permanent in a live system. I'm going to turn off that calculator and shut it up. It's got a little cover for it that you can close it up, and keep the dust off of it. <clears throat> Of course, it, it'll go off. <laughs> I don't know why I'm looking at it again to see if it... I was looking to see if it was off, I guess. <clears throat> okay, I'll leave all that like it is. <clears throat> Get back and try to... Okay. So, yeah, I do... <clears throat> you don't have to add those extra ports... Uh, add the ports in again. Um, I don't think it hurts because I've done, well, I don't know. My, my Fedora 23 system, I don't think, I guess I got to look, but I don't think it, uh, I mean, I don't even have a VNC, direct, you know, preset like that. <clears throat> yeah, I've left my laptop preview playing so I would know what I was doing. Still, it is a little behind. Okay, now I think this time I can just log in with the one that works. Yep. There we go. So, that's all you got to do. Uh, I, like I said, I was doing that trusted there. I did public VNC server, and then I did trusted VNC server, and then I just, for grins I guess runtime to permanent I do, don't think that makes any difference one way or the other really you can, and I think you can even just I'm pretty sure you can just close the firewall and it will say whatever you just did it, in real time I mean you don't have to and this is what I all I'm installing is uh, <clears throat> KRFB I thought it would show the name in there Anyway, this is KRFB. It's a, it's a KDE app. Just look for it in the uh, DNF repos. <clears throat> I mean, the DNF Dragora app in Fedora 27, which is looking in the repos. <clears throat> and then just all the, I just installed the newest one available. And, uh, and then open up the firewall and you're, you're up and running. Um, I might look at my firewall later if I remember, but I just want to get back to doing this. So, <clears throat> of course, you can see the 
we can see the uh, rest of my system because I don't even think that this particular view of this tiger it, I'm using it because it doesn't lag it doesn't use as much resources <clears throat> at least I don't think it does mm. the one that I like the best it didn't use to hardly at all but it, it has been lately so so I'm making sure my, my stream's working so I'm going to leave it like this. <clears throat> I would really like to. If there's nothing you can do to make this full screen, there's no controls for this. Once you open it up, it's whatever size you preset it to. <clears throat> now, you could tell it to open up to full screen, but then you're not going to have a way. How are you going to close it and get out of it? I don't know. Maybe I'm sure there's a sh keyboard shortcut, but I don't want to get stuck in it. So, so you're going to have to see two rows of... Uh, you know, icons and desktop settings and all that. Okay, install the hard drive. <clears throat> but what we're really doing is we're doing remote desktop over to mom's machine from my Fedora 23. Not installing anything on my Fedora 23 system, the one that I'm streaming from. And if I was really trying to work on this system, with, uh, you know, with, uh, well, look there. See, I can't see all of the... I can't see the continue unless I page down a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, of course, you can't see everything. <clears throat> I don't care for that too much, but because it actually, I always wish these would open up full screen, and now it does by default. And uh, I get, I could make it fit. I could close the app and change the settings. You know what? I could at least do that. So. Um, how would I do that? Okay, I'm going to close my session. Open it back up again and go to options. <clears throat> Leave all those alone. Screen. I, at one time I had it 1024, but see I said resize remote session to the local window. <clears throat> Full screen mode. If I did that, how would I get out of there? I don't know. There's not anything right there telling me. Miscellaneous. Uh, share. Don't don't disconnect other viewers. Show dot when no cursor. Now, I don't know what would be the next size close to it is the thing. Um... That would be the right dimensions you know I know it wouldn't be 1024 by 768 displays 1920 by 1080 yeah I don't know <clears throat> uh, it wouldn't be it's going to be something you know it's not going to be even numbers like that or a little I guess a, yeah, even numbers like that. 1920 by 1080. 10, see, I can't, I don't know. Mm, which one would be the right dimensions and not make it all skewed out of shape? 1280 by 1024. That's probably too much smaller. I could try it. I think I've tried that one before. 1280 by 1024. Close. 1024. Copy 1280 by 1024, but you don't. I'll take that off of there now. <clears throat> we'll see what we get. What we get? It'll probably be so small I won't. I'll hate it. It's still not good. <clears throat> still can't see it all. But it is better. I'll try it one more time. What would be the other one? Now I have to go back into my... I shouldn't have closed my little app there. I don't have screen resolutions memorized. No way.
1280 by 9. Oh, 1280 is too wide. <clears throat> 11. No, the only next one is 1152. I'm going to have to leave it like that. Just as long as I don't hit save, I'll be all right. Okay, 1152. <clears throat> I bet it'll be out of shape. <clears throat> 864. I think I'm wasting time here. So it doesn't fit. I guess that's why I was down there at 1024 by 768. So, uh, That's square, <clears throat> though it's not the right size, and it makes everything stretched and out of shape. 832 by 624. I may be missing something. Maybe you do need to say resize it to fit. No, that doesn't work. <clears throat> Full screen mode. 832. As long as you can read it good, it won't matter. You know that it's... It still doesn't work. It's not changing it. Why not? Put that over there so that it won't be interf interfering and confusing my brain there. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I don't understand it. I'm going to put that back in there again. 1920 by 1080. Because at least that's the right, normal size of my monitor. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put fit the local window. Maybe that will straighten it out. 1920 by 1080. Stay okay. Connect. Mm -mm. But it still doesn't <clears throat> look any, um, the sizes never seem to have changed as well. I don't get, I'm going to try this for a while. And if it acts up, I'll just log back in with the other one. Because this one will do exactly what I need. <clears throat> I can make it fit in there or I can go full screen and now you can see it all. <clears throat> it looks just like you're working only on that machine. So uh, now that I've fiddled around forever, I'm going to actually start an install here. <clears throat> I hope. I'm letting my preview load up. Notice where my mouse is happened to be laying. It's going to change my, if I don't watch out, it's going to change my, uh, if I hit that click button by accident picking up the mouse, it'll change my language to boson, boson, I can't even read that word, bo. Boson, Boson Ski, Boson Ski, which is what? Bosnian, oh, okay, in English it's Bosnian, I never noticed that before, but I want English, English, English United States, and uh, <clears throat> let me go ahead and see that my audio is still working and everything, okay, <coughs> Now, normally, I just hit enter on the keyboard, but I'll go ahead and do the clicking. Uh, well, earlier, it didn't actually do anything. But the other thing is, I think it probably would. But uh, <clears throat> before I go to the disk this time, I'm going to do the network host name. Okay, local host at local domain. Now, i got to name it something. I won't name it. Don't name it too long, then it won't show up. 
Um, this time I'm just going to give it my... No, yeah. Oh, here we go. Maybe too long. Well, I had Theta's Hot Rod PC. You know, actually, those... Hers, if I remember right, in the routers, it's the length, and I think it may be... It might be that that... Uh, dash, I couldn't say the right word, the dash may not show work in a router, you know, in, in my router. Theta, Fedora, and you can use capital letters if you want, but it's harder to type them out if you decide you want to. Theta, Fedora 27, it's not a whole lot shorter than Theta's, well, Theta's Hot Rod PC is what I've always named it, but I was thinking I wanted something different to know for sure which one it is, you know. I hardly ever type them out, and it looks so crappy. Whoops. Theta, T-H-E-D-A, F-E-D-O-R-A, at Fedora 27. I'm going to do that. I think that'll be short enough, and without any, I think it might be those dashes, because my, uh, my red, black Biostar won't show up on any routers. <clears throat> it says it can't read it, or it's just something. Okay, hit done. Uh, that should be okay. Time and date's already right. So uh, now I'm going to pick my drive. Now, let's see what we're going to have to do. Okay, there's the drive. Specialized, custom. This may turn out to be harder than I think. I would like to make additional space available. Let's see. Advanced custom. Oh, it's DB. What? 1.08 megabyte free. Yeah, that's all it sees is free. It's <clears throat> actually the easiest. Uh, you know what? I may, I may have forgotten an important step. I made that EX, all those EXT4s. Probably would have been easier if I would have uh, the, the one I want to put this on. If I'd have went back and just left those uh, left those two second and third one and deleted the first one, then I'd have free space and and it'll automatically just take up that free space. Uh, it'll say, "Do you want to use the free space?" You say yes. But I think I might be able to get by it. I'm gonna go ahead and see what this blivet looks like. It may be more like part of Magic anyway. They say it's advanced, but that may not be. Uh, maybe the one thing that I'm used to. Okay, automatic custom. As long as it has, I I don't want to try to lay out the fedora, all the little partitions separately myself. That's pretty hard. I can't even remember. Let's see. It doesn't give me any more options, so I'm going to hit done. Oh, there we go. It put me in something that looks just about like G parted. Okay, there we go. I want S to be one. I want to use that. Okay. Now. But, so this would have gave me basically the same, if I'd have went in there the first time, it would have gave me basically the same thing as G parted. I could have done all that. <clears throat> but what I may do is what I was just talking about. All you can do is just edit partitions in here. There's not, you're not going to be setting all that stuff up. So, if I delete that one, yes. Okay, now I have free space. Now I'm going to just leave those other two like they are. See, I could, I actually could have ended up doing all this in this blivet, but since I couldn't get back in there easily, I just said, oh, well, I'm going to go with what I know. Okay, checking storage. There's an error. Okay. Nah, that I don't want to go with any errors, so I'm going to say undo last transaction. Oh, maybe I needed to hit do. Yeah, let's see. We'll try one more time. Let's see. We'll do that again. Okay. Yes. Now, the gears, you probably have to hit that. Edit selected device. Try that. No. Okay, well, I don't like those errors. 
under last transaction it didn't actually do it so um, let's see let's just get out of it <clears throat> do whatever I got to do to get out of this installer and go to gparted and it looks to me like <clears throat> the simplest thing to do is to this is how I generally do it I just throw out a step is to start with wherever I want my fedora to be put it make that blank even the only reason I made the partitions was to divide the space up evenly in an easy way and to keep it from being act automatically taken over by the fedora installer and now I'm kinda gone with these er stuck in these errors here um, you could go and kill the installer but then it might not start back up again let's click for details <clears throat> you have not defined a root partition yeah I know See an old swap, uh, yeah. So it's it's trying so hard to automate this for you that it just fights you. And there should be a way to get out of it completely. Right clicking brings up that little menu. That'll tell you about that partition, you know. Um. I'm in full screen mode, right? Okay, so I really don't want to do this. How did I get out of it before? No pending actions. Yes, I know. There's no back button. I was kind of grumping about the bane having their chain, making it hard to find how to get out, get go back. Heck, there is no back button in here. <clears throat> No, I don't see a cancel a way to cancel your operations and go back or anything. Just done. And when you hit done, it just says Oh, now this time it did go back. Were well, you crazy thing? Okay, good. Okay, this time it let me do it. Okay, I'm gonna quit. Are you sure you wish to quit the installer? Yes. Now if you quit it normally within its own you know program, usually it'll start back up. I've Think I think I remember having you know killed it with uh, you know going to the processes with system what this is mate system monitor it's the one that's on here but whichever one you might use um, yeah I don't think it'll start back up again until you reboot and I don't I want to avoid that since it takes me so much time to get started and show it you know show my work here it's beginning to go a little slow so I may have to use that other Viewer. I guess there's no point in keeping on working in this one. Um, it just uses a lot more. <clears throat> yeah, I, maybe because it's. I don't know why. I suppose I could go in here and. I think I've already done that a bunch of times. In the settings, wherever they are. Aren't there some settings? And there's some right there. A lot of them you can set to, you know, the. The color resolution, everything, and uh, quit, and cut. You know, cut it down to where you, you're you're not. Uh, just have to deal with this one. It it seems to work a lot longer without giving trouble. Okay, uh, I went blank. Okay, here we go. G parted. Now this will be the <coughs> my workaround, my easier way to get what I want to happen. Oops. Okay. So that why why does that look funny? Well, because I'm on the on the USB stick. There we go. Now I'll just this is G parted. It's this is very similar. Now I'm just going to delete that. But the other two will still stay there. Make sure it shouldn't break my. I'll still have my. Um, that's what it did. It already did it. Okay. But it won't break my, um, what is that saying? Information. It's saying it's not there. I might have broke that. 
but the other one's still okay and it won't matter i'm gonna i can always just reformat it well i could just do it again anyway but i don't want to swap all this around i don't want to change this to sd uh, one or anything so i'm gonna leave it just like it is i should be able to uh delete it and do it again or whatever i want once i get everything on the beginning part of it here so this is the beginning the middle and the end of the drive physical drive so i'm going to uh, leave it like that information it should say somewhere in here yeah it wouldn't even read up all that if it didn't have still have the uh partition table if you if i had broken the partition table then uh Something went wonky there, though. It really it did. E2 label. No such file or directory while trying to open DevSDB3. Couldn't find valid system super block. Well, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it right now because I think it probably won't fix itself, but it, I'll just format it again. That's going to be my backup. I may have to, after I get everything I want done, done, then I'll go back and use Gparted and just do it again. So, um, it's a roundabout way to do it, but, uh, it, you know, it's always been, it can, it can be really complicated. Uh, it took me a long time, you know, learning the, uh, oh, let me open up the installer again, if it'll open up. It took me a long time learning about, for, you know, Linux uh, file systems and partitions and all that stuff. But the harder, the more they work on these uh, installers to make them easier, the more they make them harder for me, so... I went to the trouble to learn the, you know, at least the basics of it. I guess I know more than just basics, but I know enough to get in some real trouble. But here we go, English, English. I'll have to. I'm sure I'll have to do my, yeah, my host name again because I got out of it. Yeah, to be done for door twenty-seven. I kind of hate it being so long, but that's yeah, that's not. I could type that. Oh, leave that dash out of there. I think that's what gives trouble. Theta, door twenty-seven, no dash. Okay. I think that'll be all right. I think uh, yeah. Now I'm gonna have to go always go up and down to see everything. Okay. But that's this this one seems to work a lot better. So up and down and back and forth. I don't, I don't know why you can't just get that to fit. Maybe I'm sure you could if you understood it right. I guess I don't. Okay, so now not on our little USB stick. There's 1.86 gigabyte, 1.82 terabyte. <laughs> Got to pay attention there. Now automatic should be okay for me now. Uh, I've got to page around over here to find the next button. Where is it? Has it disappeared? Oh, it's up at the top left. I guess in this case, maybe that's a good place for it. <laughs> I was looking where I expect to see it. Okay, automatic. I don't need to make additional space because I just did that myself. Now, I might have been able to do that. I might have been able to click that a minute ago and say make additional space and then say I want to use. Probably could have done that. Oh, use that first whole uh, partition. Yeah, that would probably been the, the good way to do it. And then I might not have broke that uh, thing, you know, that third partition by completely deleting the. Because what it would have done is redivided and formatted that first partition up the way I wanted it. Ah, so now there's more than one way to skin a Linux cat, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, that probably would have been the way. Automatic, I would like to create more space. I've done that kind of thing before, and I think that's really the easiest way than what I just ended up doing. What I did, I think, will still work though. I guess I got to click again. Let's wait. It's all blue, like it. Uh, all I notice is you know that one away. But okay, there we go. It's just slow. So yeah, don't keep on clicking. Okay, checking the storage configuration. Okay, but yeah, but what did it select? I want to see. I think it'll tell me on the next one. I'll just go ahead and go to the next one. Now I do have to go to the bottom right. Oh, is it already doing it? It's doing it. 
without telling me. Well, that makes me mad. I won't know. I won't know what I've got until it's installed. Crap. STB one. It's doing. It's it's jacking up everything. No, wait, STB1, yeah, STB1, STB2. No, I think it's going to do what I was hoping for. I thought it, uh, when I saw that SDB1, I was thinking, oh, crap. Because, see, they do triple ways of naming these things. uh, Another way they name them is SD, uh, let's see. Well, depending on what app you're in, sometimes they'll say SDO, SD1. SD2 instead of SD1, 2, 3. In this case, it was not saying the O, it was not using the O like that it used to be the, supposed to be the, you know, proper way. Now they're saying SD, well, they say SDB, which would really be SDO. Uh, can I say, can I remember this right? Let's see, SDO. I can't remember it. I just remember you used to, used to have to really pay attention um, but it's uh, it's not only done the partitioning, it's installing the software. It's doing the installation. Thing is, it only takes ten uh, minutes or so to do that part. So <laughs> it might even take that long just to get that written on there. It's pretty fast now. It was pretty fast with twenty three, twenty six. And uh, now I'm not sure. But the thing is, it's aggravating the heck out of me that I don't actually know what it did to it. I'm wondering, you know what? I think I could do that. I think I could open it. Let's see if I can open up Gparted. As long as I don't try to do anything to it. Wrong system now. Okay, G. Oh. That's why I don't like these kind of viewers that you can't get. Where's G parted? There it is. Okay, if I open up G parted without making sure I don't do anything, just look at the partitions. Unless it says it's busy and it can't do it. We'll see. I'll just be in use. But see, it's already been partitioned. It's... uh. Should be able to because you can look at the uh, the one I'm running live from, but uh, okay, let's see what it gave me. It did not give me what I wanted. I've got oh yes it did, XT4, XT4 extended LVM. Oh yeah, one gigabyte. So they went from 500 megabytes to a gigabyte uh, for the boot partition basically. I can make that big enough where you can read it. See what that full address is there. If I can get it to pull over. Okay. Now, that's a bit too much. I don't want to be able to see everything, though. I don't want the... Oh, I see. The flags are... Yeah, there's no flags. Okay. Mount sysimage boot. One gigabyte. used 1.62 megabyte well there may be more later um extended which is where the whole operating system is going to be 620 megabytes okay and then the lvm fedora always uses an lvm it's there it, it resides within that ext4 see it's the same size so it's a really just it's really one actual you know partition but it shows up as two like that and then my my and there's no error on that now, so maybe it got fixed when, when it did that. So it did do what I hoped. Good. So I want to, I, I think I could have done it with a little less stress there, but I did get where I wanted to go. Okay. So um, I'm going to let the installer run. And I think whenever you get a next button, it'll, no, I think, yeah, I'm going to leave it like that, I think. I'm trying to figure out how I can leave it so that I will see when it tells me that it's finished. I might have to, I might have to go down there like that. 
Actually, I think it's probably the best thing is to be able to see that bottom right corner. Okay, so now I need to start figuring up what's going to be her root password. I'm thinking and writing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I went to hit my sticky note up against my little piece of wood that I have my laptop sitting on to knock the racer dust off of it or grease or whatever. This is an erasable pen, not a pencil. And I hit my fingernail and it hurt. Okay. Okay, what well, we, we want us to do root right now, but I got to write them down in the right order for us. I want to put hers on the top and then. Mm. There, I think that'll do. See, it gives you something to do while while it's uh, while it's writing all that, I've copied all the files over and everything. Okay. Now, where's the next button? Oh, I guess it's back up there in the top left. Done. Okay, now it should ask me for, okay, user creation. Now, the full name, what I always do, is do the name with the capital letter like normal, and then it'll automatically put in the, it, the, the name with... Uh, you know, on small, small case. And that, if you have to type it in, especially like in Debane, you have to to log in. It's easier than having to hit that capital. Keep your username shorter than 32 characters. Make this user administrator. I don't do that in Fedora because I like, uh, that complicates things. I like whenever it wants. Uh, I don't want to have to know what do you want, root or sudo. Uh, for sudo, you put in your password. For root, you put in the root password. But if you just don't make them administrator, then when, anytime I'd ask for uh, uh, well, some apps that say don't come from the Fedora repos might throw you off. But as far as the Fedora repos apps that come in there, uh, if it asks for a user, it's going to be the root user <coughs> almost, <coughs> almost every time. All right. Now. 
Oh, it says complete down there too. So um, I'm going to hit a little reload on my preview. Man, I said 20 minutes. It's like five minutes. Oh, let's finish. It says complete. Let's see what it says now. Fedora is now fully installed, but some configuration still needs to be done. Finish and finish it and then click the finish configuration button. Okay. So uh, I've already done the username and all that stuff. Okay, yeah. Now it's going to, I think it's going to install Grub and stuff like that. Creating users. Yeah, generating INET frames. INET RAM FS, I'm sorry. INIT RAM FS. Okay. And um, of course, the little banners down there tell you some of the stuff that's been installed and all that. And um, make sure everything is going on with my. Yep, looks like we're doing good. Okay, so. Um, don't know, it may go pretty fast or it may still take a while. It may be some point in here where it takes a while. I really don't know. Oh, now it says 80.4. Oh, that's in source. <laughs> um, the sun, is, actually, it's a cloudy day. This is a cloudy day. The sun's not really up. It's 9.28 a.m. The sun should really be blasting on that window right now. I'm glad it's not. I'd really be even hotter in here. Luckily, I'm not dying because I guess it's cool enough outside. I can't see the temperature. Why can't I see the temperature? I usually have the temperature. That's, you know, at the top there, that's my system, and usually the temperature is right there. It went away. Sometimes it quits working, then it comes back. Maybe the server's not reachable or something. Okay, complete. Six Fedora is now successfully installed and ready for you to use. Go ahead and reboot and start using it. Quit. Now, when you're in the live system like that, it doesn't reboot or anything. It just, uh, you know, quits back to the live system that you're on. So, in order to show that reboot and all that, first boot... I will uh, go get on the camera again. So I'm just going to close this remote desktop. And uh, I'll just go ahead and get on just the camera so you can see it as well as possible. Now let me flip over to that machine. Now, if I weren't trying to do all the extra partitioning and all that, if I just had a blank hard drive and wanted to, you know, just wanted to use it as it was, then I would have been, you know, that would have been really fast. I mean, that was, that's the fastest install I remember doing. I noticed that the Bane had gotten faster, but wow, they, they've really got these installs going fast. That's pretty cool. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, KRFB is still running in the background, I just noticed. Let's go ahead and ah, right-click, and then you can quit it. Okay, yes, I want to quit desktop sharing. Just, I mean, it shouldn't make any difference at all, but um, just like, wanted to do that. All right, now, okay, you can do system shutdown. Oh, yeah, and in, in, in Fedora, that's what you do. System shutdown, and then you'll have the chance to say restart. So that, oh, but I really wanted to shut it down because I need to get my USB stick out. So see if I can get it out. I don't want to, actually, I'm not going to, you can't, it's hard to know the right time. And uh, so you can basically, you probably wouldn't damage the USB stick just when it's reading it. But what you could do is mess up the machine and it, be looking for it you know so i'm going to leave it there and do a hard shutdown get that usb stick out and then boot it back now put you back where you belong okay now 
Oh no, our work has only just begun. And we've got we've got Fedora 27 on here, and if everything's a okay, then uh, well, I still have to back up my Fedora 14, her Fedora 14. Okay, there you go. Uh, all we have is rescue and the kernel that it installed, and it'll automatically, you know, within like 10 seconds there, go ahead and boot. If you don't do anything, if you wanted, if he was broken and you needed to go into rescue. Now you you won't see anything but the graphic there unless you hit a keyboard key. Then you uh, just hit the up arrow key, or you can. I think you can hit really any key. I generally hit either the space bar, the escape, or or a key or arrow key. It's the ones I'm used to using a lot. Anyway, um, some distros it matters which key you hit. You get something different if you hit a different key. But I think in Fedora you can hit any key and get, always just get to the. The terminal window there now the very first boot you'll get of course it kind of blinked and then went away i don't think it's broke though there we go now um preview <clears throat> i think it's either stopped itself or i forgot to get it going i wanted to make sure everything was okay so um See her, her, her name is already in there, and there's no other name. So there, the only other option is this other, and you can try to, you can log in as root, I think, still, if you really need to to fix something, but don't run that way, you know. So, uh, looks like my camera's moved a little bit. It's still showing. It's cutting off the bottom of the screen, and I think the, the rubber band's flat. Maybe the heat. <laughs> Seriously, I think maybe the heat might have warming up in here. The rubber bands let that camera actually it didn't go down; it went up. So that uh, might not be the reason. I don't know, but anyway, it's moved a little bit. Now, I don't remember running into it. It's not off left to right; it's just cutting off the bottom of the screen. So uh, up here, there's only one desktop. If you click on that little icon there, the very top. I don't know if you can. Well. I'm, uh, I was saying, why isn't my mouth moving in my preview? Well, because I stopped playing it. Anyway, if you had more than one desktop, you could switch desktops. You could switch uh, the language there. And what's that? Uh, whoa. Stay in the same place. Large font, high contrast. You could do that if you needed to. And then that's the shutdown and reboot button right there. And that'll always be there. Now, go ahead and log in. Now, on this system, I'll have to remember she's the main user. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to make me a username on here. On You know, I went around and around that with these different systems. Uh, I don't remember actually right now on Fedora, but I remember on Debane, I couldn't install certain things like drivers and stuff. And her username that I made for her, yeah, that was Debane. What was that? Oh, it was Fedora 26 on that AS Rock. Uh, yeah, it was Fedora. I couldn't install drivers and stuff. I was, you know, I went through all that trouble of setting that system up for her to use temporarily, and then I finally realized that the power supply is about to die, and it wasn't going to keep running. It kept crashing, not all the time, just just enough to be a real problem. Okay, so so now I have to. I'm not going to do it now, right now, but because uh, I'm getting really hungry, I'm gonna. I'm at, probably end up quitting for my day. I guess I don't know. I'm gonna have to get my supper and I'm just starving even though I have my snack and uh, by that time I'll probably be so tired that uh, I won't be feel like you know going on working but uh, here it is and we'll see how it runs again but uh, before I go uh, see if it'll play YouTube videos and stuff without and before I go um, oh yeah let's go ahead and install KRFB first right off Let's see, DNF Dragora. Now we oh the first thing before you install any apps is do your first update. And I've learned from uh, over the years, it's really better to do your first update in the command line. You can see everything that's happening. And nine times out of ten, on all these other previous distros since, well I don't know, pretty far back. The very first update will always want to hang up in the GUI. But if you'll, you know, there's 709 updates. Uh, but if you'll go ahead, let me go ahead and change it to the look and feel that we want. This time we're going to get to keep it. This will be good. If you decide to do something a little different, that's fine later. But right now I'm going to do that. And 
I'm going to move that over. I don't want to accidentally click on that. That's actually good. There's plus and minus buttons down there. You could use that slider, but that would be really hard to control with the mouse. But you can just hit, I can just hit plus one time and get them all up there. Interface. Some of there should be icons. Oh, I think it's in the details there. No, that's not it. Oh, customize, and you can change the icons, but I'm going to leave the ones that are in there unless I see some reason why I don't like them. Okay, so... Uh, go ahead and... Uh, Care FB. But I wouldn't... I'm not going to go start installing a bunch of apps or... Uh, you know, doing my app install. Well, I'm not going to do my app install scripts on here, I don't think. We'll see. I don't want to give her a bunch of apps she don't want, don't need. Probably not. I'll probably have to do hers one at a time so that I won't overfill this thing. I mean, it's not I'm worried about filling up the space. I'm giving her so much junk she can't find what she wants. Oh, and I forgot to change it to all instead of, you know, updates first. And then I'll do my search. Install KRFB and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll kind of run around it here and and see if it's still going to work good. It worked pretty good as, considering that it's a dual core. <laughs> worked pretty good on YouTube and stuff. I, mean, I kind of gave it a little workout the other day, and so hopefully it'll still work good. And uh, I'm going to hit search now. Let's see. 17.12, 17.081. I've been using 17.12. So, yeah, if you want to... Uh, Remote desktop, just install KRFB and all of its dependencies, and you'll be up and going. <clears throat> it's only 17 meg, 41 files, 17 megabytes. And of course, now it's going to be permanent. It's not going to be this having to do it over and over. Yeah, you see why I get all bitchy about having to muck around in the command line to get things to work? Because I'm spoiled with things like this. You know, this is how most things work in Fedora. And it really aggravates me when people that, are, you know, that are really know a lot about this stuff, instead of telling you these easy ways, they tell you all this hard way out in the command line. And they can make out like that's the only way to do it. Um, of course, I went... I was trying to do the easiest way I knew of. I just thought that I thought this would fill up my memory. I thought there'd be a lot more apps that had to be installed and everything. Um, I haven't. I always used other uh, other apps. You know, I didn't use the KRFB before because I was using the Genome Remote Desktop app, and there was a control interface just like KRFB, but it was for Genome, but basically not just like it, but similar to it. And I'd always use that until they quit. It's it's not in the newer repos, you know. It's not in Fedora 23. That's the first time I I, I couldn't use it anymore that I remember. I had a hard time finding it because they quit installing it by default uh, ever since they changed from Genome 2 to Genome 3. But I didn't use I I didn't use Genome 2. I used um, Mate and you know the fork of Genome uh, fork of Genome 2. Let's see, I've got to, uh, I gotta get me a figure me up a password for KRFB. I was just using some temporary thing a while ago, easy thing to remember. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, over here, system tools, KRFB. I'm gonna put that up on my panel, panel, so I can get to it quick too. I don't want that email app on there. If you want to get rid of one, I think you have to unlock it first. They'll come locked to the panel. 
Now then, remove that clause email I don't want to use. Okay. Yeah. Can't move them until you unlock them, so I'm going to unlock them all. Actually, I just go ahead and leave them unlocked so that as I add them, they won't give me fights. Uh, now, for right now, it's just going to stay like that. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not going to... Now, I won't fool with that KDE thing, encrypt, uh, key thing. I'll have to make, I guess I have to make a key for the system or something. I don't even remember. But anyway, I'm going to give it. Okay, there comes the trash truck. Yeah, okay, I can actually close that window. And it won't, uh, I won't actually close the app. Okay, now I should be able to get back on the remote desktop. Okay, back to desktop. Where's my desktop? There we go. I'm going to try the one, the uh, viewer that I like the best for now. Maybe it'll work. Oh, firewall. Dang it. Getting in a hurry, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay, let me go change the firewall. Okay, here we go. We need to change our firewall. Oh, I still left uh, Dragora running. Okay, let me shut that. Firewall. Okay. And... Uh, and you have to type in your root password to, do, to change the... Do anything on the firewall when... Uh, when you're actually, you know, when you're actually set up in a real system like this. So I'm going to open up the ports or services that I want. Oh, wait, let's see. Leave the public like it is. Well, I don't know. That's the thing. I like to, uh, I guess it doesn't make a lot of difference, you know, if you use the one called home or if you use, um, right now I just want to get where I get everything going here. So I'm going to say VNC server and I think I'll do one other thing and then leave it like that. I'm not going to go with trust, you know, change the trusted things because it's not a trusted thing on the whole system, not for a real live system. But, uh, Looking at the, uh, yeah, VNC that automatically sets 5900 to 5903 at just TCP. 
but that works perfectly no problem there so um, I am gonna say run time to permanent because if you don't when you reboot it'll all go away uh, but right now it's in the public uh, profile I guess you'd say so um, I should be able to log into it now. Okay. Now, back to the desktop. And try that again in my app that I like. There we go. Now, I think it fit in there. <clears throat> and well, if you let that preview keep playing, it it gets behind and it won't. I think it's probably the machine can't keep up with it. It'll it'll quit playing for after a while, and then if it, if you reload it, it'll start playing again. I think. I'm looking at it now. Um, it's taking a while to reload. Okay. I might need to close the web browser on that thing, open it back up. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, there's full screen. Okay, so there's full screen. Yeah, that's all I had to do on the firewall. So I'm just going to close that one. And my KRFB is running right there. You can just close it. DNF Dragora updates is is running uh, by default. It's I think it's it's in the uh, auto start apps. And so there would be, if I click on it, it'll go through that whole thing, but there's like 700 some updates. But like I said, actually, I may have to take that out. I had to do that, I think, on that Fedora 26, because as long as that's running, you can't go and run a DNF command in the terminal. Uh, it'll say it's locked by another app, which is this DNF updates. Um, but right now, I'll just leave it alone. I'll fool with it later. But... Uh, Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Everything's good. <clears throat> I was looking at my preview and I thought, that looks awful fuzzy. <clears throat> but I think it's because it's on that. It's very small and it's on that laptop. It should look pretty good. It should just as look as good on the video as it does in my screen. Uh, here, or at least almost as good. So, what I want to do now, just, uh, of course, here's, the, here's what comes with it. Basically the same thing as the last several versions of Fedora. And um, it, has, it does have LibreOffice, the whole suite. And uh, well, I do like that they added a while, while back, a couple of several distros ago, was Gpart. It comes with it. KRFB is what I just added for the remote desktop. Now I know for sure I don't need to add any. I don't have to put the server in myself. There's a server that comes with KRFB. Uh, so don't have to fool around with any other VNC servers. Now here's the other partitions which don't have anything on them, and that's where I'll you know one of them I'll put uh, the second one in the from the from the actual front to the back of, or the end of the drive, beginning to the end of the drive I'll put Fedora 14, and then the last one I'll make it be the backup drive. Um, used to make a lot of differences. Well, Windows would only go so far into a drive. Uh, actually, different versions say Windows 7 will only recognize certain sizes of drives. And you know, different versions will only go up to a certain size and all that stuff. It's a real pain. But with Linux, uh, it is ever since uh, Fedora 5, it's, it wouldn't matter. I mean, there weren't any drives this big back then, but it would have done it. Uh, well, I think it would have done this big of drives. I know it would have went up to a couple of terabytes anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, it did. It 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 can matter. The booting and like booting, you couldn't put. And for instance, when I first started learning about that, you couldn't put your Windows XP past uh, whatever size it was. I forgot several gigabytes uh, from the beginning of the of the hard drive, the uh, beginning of the drive, or it would never see. It couldn't see it to boot it. Uh, well, Windows Windows bootloaders couldn't. 
uh, but uh, yeah, I think the Linux bootloaders could. But anyway, so what I always did and still do is just go ahead and put the Windows at the beginning. That way, you won't have, if there's any of that telltale problem running around, come it's still in there in any apps or anything. Just put it at the first first part of the drive. The second part, I'd put my next Linux partition. Uh, I mean Linux operating system and then this is what I'm going to do and then well I'm not going to have Windows on this one I'm going to have two Linux and then a backup now I built a Windows 7 system I put for somebody I put Windows 7 at the beginning NTFS in the middle for backup and then the, the Linux system on the end and then the Windows 7 uh, for the write speeds because Windows 7 didn't have to look all the way across to the end of the drive to write uh, uh, you know uh, that does matter. They've all, I've all, everything I've read and everything and seen in videos, you know, mostly read about that stuff. Uh, when you get bigger drives like what we have now, it matters uh, in, your, in your speed, your seek speed, your find and your write speeds and all that stuff when you're looking for data, especially your apps, you know, when you're doing a search for files and stuff. So, uh, but it doesn't matter near as much in Linux as it does in Windows. So, but I'm not going to have Windows. So, I'm just going to put my backup on the end. And put my two uh, my two operating systems, you know, first and second sectors, I guess, or not not sectors. But it's not actually the first and second partitions either. I'll just go ahead and oh, what did I just do? I clicked, but I didn't click on anything. Okay, G parted. I'll show you what I'm talking about. May have messed that up. <clears throat> I hit in between two keys. I guess not. I guess. Uh, okay. So you know, there's no other drives in it now. It's just this one. So the very first one, ext4 boot partition. That you know, uh, that's the Fedora boot partition. Then the extended 620 gigabytes, which also contains the LVM with Fedora on it. Let's see if we can read that. Do something where we can read Fedora 27. Yeah, Fedora the Theta Fedora 27. That's how it did it once I uh, once I um, you know the, the the host name that I gave it. Then there's an ext4 621 gigabytes ext4 621 gigabytes, and I'm going to put Fedora 14 on that one, and that one will be my backup. And when I go put Fedora 14, it's not going to take up all that space. I'll have to go and look if I may have to go do some reading and catching up on, uh, you know, clone, you know, cl how to use Clonezilla is the one I always like to use. There's several other ones, but uh, that I've used a couple other anyway. Some of them are really hard and I just get hung up in them. But uh, anyway, uh, you can. Well, well, the thing is, you you can either tell it to uh, use that whole space that you're giving it, or you can tell it to. Um, or you can have it be the exact same size as what it was originally. And I'm thinking really all I need is the exact same size that it was originally because there's 14 gigabytes of free space on it. So that's all. I don't need, she may never use it again, you know, but it's it'll just be there in, in case she needs any of those apps that aren't going to be on the new system. Uh, and then, <clears throat> and it'll sort of be a static backup of all her files too. I won't write new files to it, I don't think, because then it would fill it up. But I'll leave it like it is. <coughs> <coughs> and then uh, both of them I'll have lucky backup. I'll change the lucky backup in, in the old system to backup to here, to the new backup. And then this one I'll back up from here, or from here, actually. Actually, from there to here. And um, that's my plan. Uh, getting there, we'll see exactly what I have to do. This may, uh, I might have to delete that partition like I did a, a while ago to get all that to work out easily. And then this one, I might have to delete it and remake it, you know, in a, di in a different size or something, or just grow. I may just resize it. You can right click and uh, resize move, you know, you might, might do that. We'll see. But um, it's already fixed. Uh, once uh, Fedora wrote all that, there was something that was connecting that. I don't know why the SDA2 was fine, but SDA3 was broken until its address was broken until I put that back in there. But uh, that worked fine, and it's SDA1 like I would want it to be. 
and that's FDA 4 5 now that is out of order but I learned to quit worrying about that now if you have these on here it does that uh, if I the only way I could have got by with not having it could have been another way I, I may have done it the hard way uh, this was the workaround I learned years ago uh, because there wasn't an easy way to do what I wanted uh, within the installer um, but there may be a way to do it that's easy, that I, I kind of thinking maybe I forgot something when I saw that you know when it says make more space available there wasn't much in there much power in that tool but I think there's a lot more power more things you can do options I might have been able to use that make more space available and uh, well not from an empty drive I mean I couldn't just start with an empty drive easily I kind of went through there and I didn't see an easy way to do that but anyway it ain't gonna hurt a darn thing it won't matter you you know I mean especially for her and me I'm when I get back in here uh, I don't do a lot of things if I need to know where you know which one's which I just always open up I'll close this I think it's in here um, no it's not in here I'll have to install it but there's a one called discs an app called discs I think it is and uh, it doesn't matter this one's just great They're, they each one have their their features but uh, anyway I open up gparted or whichever app I want to uh, to make sure you know if I'm doing something with a partition I know which one I'm on and all that doesn't really matter I don't remember the numbers that well anyway um, so let's see let's go ahead and open up Firefox now now see it's running great just 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 normal operation you wouldn't notice it's not too much for the uh, the hardware um, so far so good you know <clears throat> um there's Firefox home page and or Firefox and uh and I could oh I want the menu bar for sure. I won't do all that right now, but and then the toolbar it's gonna have some since this is Fedora, it's got, you know, links to different sites. And actually I think I don't like that, and I think that would just confuse her too. Because I think I even tried that before, but put that in there for her, thinking it might help her, and it just confused her. Too many options, you know. But uh, I'm just clicking on them just to go to different places. But yeah, that's a, that's a good. Uh, of course, all these are in here, but you have to you have to get there first and download the ISO image and get, at least get in a live system to see all these. So, uh, but these are help. Like if you need to go back and you need to go back and look for help, or you just you know whatever you want to know about Fedora. If you'll just uh, what I do is I leave it. I don't have it showing, and when I want to go to the, my bookmarks, all of them, I just hit Control uh, Shift zero or not zero o letter o and that opens up uh the whole bookmark manager and then uh if you do that you'll see them all and uh, of course there's hardly anything in there but the main thing they got in here now and see now i can really read that stuff and see what it is i want to go to and uh, you can also see your down downloads in there if there were any so yeah it's doing pretty good um, let's see okay I didn't ever show this so I'll show it now the system mate system monitor I, there's other system monitors I like better for uh, using all the time <clears throat> this is kind of cool but it does use up some pretty good amount of resources uh, um, to let that run so I wouldn't let that run all the time and this it doesn't ever want to stay Oh yeah, I'm on remote desktop. Also, why is that so hard to drag? It's a little harder to do things, operations like that in a remote desktop. It's working really good though, isn't it? I forgot I was on remote desktop. And that's in the viewer that I like too, isn't it? It'll, it's, works pretty good uh, until it decides to act up. And I don't know why it started doing that. But, uh, so if we, uh, sort them by there it is percent cpu okay krfb is using the most and the next is the system monitor it using that 12 percent 
of the CPU of, of the dual of the overall of the two CPUs just to run that system monitor so you know I don't leave this one running all the time now right here it tells you your basics of what you got you got Fedora 27 Theta Fedora 27 local domain see that's what I gave her and it's actually with the capital letters the way I did it and then uh, 20, release 27 64 bit kernel tells you the kernel the desktop is mate and uh, memory 2 gigabytes AMD Athlon 64 uh, X2 dual core processor 5000 plus X2 available disk, disk space 571.9 gigabytes and then uh, well, I like the other one where you can search because when you want to find like what's running or like you know what you're looking for you can just use a search or uh, <clears throat> like that actually I used to always set it by the CPU usage on top but I've noticed that set it by memory yeah make sure it's the highest biggest memory user on top and and if the CPU gets used a lot it'll be right up close to the top you know they kind of coincide a lot and so and not and what I've noticed is sometimes uh, used to always have a lot of trouble with flash using up all the processing power well, now it's apps with I guess memory holes that's using up all the memory like uh, sometimes I don't know what it is uh, open uh, OBS studio that I use all the time so what Sometimes it will, especially if you change the settings while it's running and then and, and just leave it running or go to recording or anything or do it while you're recording, it'll all of a sudden, it'll just start creeping up in the memory usage and next thing you know, it's using all of your memory and it'll lock your machine up. And some other apps will do that once in a while too. So I like, I just got to where I keep it with the most memory usage on top and then the most CPU users will be pretty close up there where you can see them with a glance. And uh, even in, the, now see, this is a whole graphic of what's going on. And uh, file system tells you about your space. I hardly ever use that because I usually, I usually just look in Crusader. But that's pretty, pretty good uh, detailed layout of what you got going there. But I always go ahead and close this because it always keeps. See, it's never really stops using less than twelve <laughs> percent. And of course, KRFB is. I guess that's how it runs. That's and. Uh, so you see so i've got firefox is not hurting a thing of course it's just sitting there right now but we'll go ahead and go to youtube see what it does i haven't done any settings or anything to this yet but I will, that will be what i'll be doing and um yeah see there's the ads <clears throat> I'm trying to think oh yeah Best thing for me to do is go to my channel. Now, I did notice that that ad was kind of sluggish as it was playing. A lot of times those ads are the heavy users. Now, let's see if I can go. Oh, I probably can't play my own stream. Uh, yeah, it always does that. Um, I don't know. Maybe once I get everything installed hit the back button and it didn't go back yet it's uh, let's see if it's like I was uh, the one thing that I was saying there um, it does seem to run better off the USB stick than it does nothing's using a heck of a lot of memory web content see is the thing it's not the Firefox itself but the web content that's uh, 34% and the 24%. It was up to 34%, probably higher if I'd have saw. It's not a heck of a lot of memory, but it's a lot of CPU in this case. And uh, yeah, see, it's still to never go back. Now let's click up there. I was using my, I have a mouse that has extra, two extra buttons on it, a back and forward button. It's really, it's called a, it's really old now with Microsoft. It's Hella Mouse. That, one good thing Microsoft made was this mouse. That thing, I got it in somewhere around 2000 and it still works great but I, I can't use any other mouse <clears throat> I, I click left you know click the left it's a kind of up high and you don't so that when you're holding it you don't click it well unless you let your thumb or finger slip a little bit you might click it on accident but um, so I'm gonna let's see oh right bookmark that in the uh, I'm put it in the toolbar for now 
so I can get there easily now. Uh, go to the, my, well, I can just go to one of these videos. Go to the last video I did yesterday, I guess. Well, it doesn't look like it wants to play either. Um, let's go back to my channel. Oh, let's look at the tools. Maybe there's an add-on that hasn't, what happens when you very first install Firefox, there's an extension plugin. There's a plugin, yeah. Missing something. The o Open 264 codec uh, is disabled. Let's see. Oh, I need to go ahead and tell it to. Well, it's either asked to activate. Well, you only got to. You can't do asked to activate. So always activate. I mean, it's so far I haven't seen any big vulnerabilities with it. So. Uh, now that was probably was wrong the other day when I was in the live system and I forgot. Now I think I'm still gonna have to close Firefox and open it back up. Now I think if I close Firefox and open it back up, now I'm gonna close this mate monitor because it's just using up its own set of resources. Now you, it's just a hair sluggish, but the security of SE Linux I think might be worth it. Um. As long as it, I'll just have to run it for a while. I'm only going to go into great details of setting this thing up until I'm sure I want to keep it for her. I don't like a sluggish system for anybody, really, because as soon as you get into something that's try, you know, that's too heavy, that that you know, when something's not working right, when a script is not responding uh, right, then uh, I'm going to try my live stream. No, that doesn't work. My, for some reason, my back button on my mouse is not working on this. And it normally does on YouTube. That's not working either. Hmm. Well, I was playing them in the... I was playing my video, all my previous videos. Now, that one's working. I sure hope that previous stream from today is not broken. I haven't, uh, there we go, it's working now. <clears throat> I don't have any audio cable plugged into that machine, so there we go. Now, this is on remote desktop, so, you know, all that uh, looks like a terrible slideshow. That's because of that. And that's the other reason why it could feel sluggish. I keep forgetting I'm on remote desktop in full screen mode. So, yeah, it's going to feel completely different. So, yeah, I'll, I'll get back on it. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now. I'll get back on it next time and go through it. I'll just have to do it with the camera and uh, so that I'm not, you know, I can, of course, you won't really be able to see it, but, I mean, the way you'll see it, but it'd be, you know, in the video you'll see it pretty good. It'd just be kind of blurry, but <clears throat> anyway. That's what I'll have to do to get a real feel as to how it's really going to run. I'm, I forgot I'm doing remote desktop. So, uh, yeah. And this is the more sluggish remote desktop app, too. So, uh, it is now. It didn't used to be. <clears throat> it used to be just as fast as the blazes. Uh, let's see those up. No, I don't want to click on those updates. Uh, but yeah, one of the first things I one the next thing I really need to do is do the DNF update, DNF updates, uh, run that in the terminal. But I just want to turn this thing off. I'm tired of listening to it. It's not super loud right now. Actually, those fans quit whining and making bad noise. But today, but uh, and it's of course making it's still it's 80.8 in here. It's almost 81 degrees, um, and I'm starving. So I'm gonna get. Shut everything down but just my machine and just to eat and relax for a while. I guess I, I don't think I'll be coming back today. It would be tomorrow. So anyway, there it is, and that's my plans. And uh, I think maybe it'll yeah, now that I re remembered, oh, yeah, I'm on remote desktop. <coughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to be as sluggish as it seems. I think it'll be fine, especially since... Uh, She's not, I guess, what you a power user they like to say. So, um, all right, let's see. I think I'll uh, actually, I'm not going to shut it down that way. I don't really like to shut it down remotely because then that kills 
the apps. Uh oh, there we go. I thought it was not going to come up. That kills the uh, KRFB and all that stuff. So I'll just do this. Let me get over there on it. All right. Now, and in the meantime, what have I done? I think I reloaded my stream and completely forgot about it. I mean, my preview of my stream on the laptop. It's like it's tired now. I don't know if it'll even play it. We'll see. <clears throat> but um, I kind of want to make sure everything looked okay. But, um, yeah, there's something about my live streams. That those FLV, I guess those FLV files, just flat, those flash files won't play. until I guess they have to be converted. Yeah, I'm still streaming okay and everything. All right. Um, until I always like to put the shutdown button up here and all that stuff. I haven't done that yet. But Okay, we'll shut that down. And now I need to go back to my machine. So yeah, did you notice I spent 10 times more time trying to get my remote desktop and all that to work to make the video than I did installing Fedora, even with a few little hiccups back and forth. So, um, yeah, if you're wanting to do install Fedora 27, then it's really not too... It's not too... It's not hard at all. If all you just want to do is just put it on a... <clears throat> Especially if it was just, you know, that's all you wanted on that system, then it wouldn't be hard. Um, so, I'm tired now. <sighs> it's eventful. Eventful night. Eventful night. All this stuff, but at least I got somewhere this time. Okay, so, um,. I'll just come back and yeah, I need to try it out some more and make sure it's going to run okay before I do anything about it, even updating it. But first thing I will do is update it. And then I'd be wanting to put her apps for her on it. And then, um, let's see, how am I going to do that? I'll be wanting to put her files in her Thunderbird profile. But actually, that Thunderbird profile, stuff like that, I want to do the, that'll be the very last thing I do before I give it to her because she, you know, it'll get to change. Every time she boots up that Thunderbird, I'll be copying it from that laptop in her room that she's using. So I got to wait till that same day, you know, in between, or at least, at least her not get on it again, you know, so that she won't lose anything. So that, I got to remember, last time I didn't remember, and there's a lot of things I didn't get done, and I ended up keeping. She couldn't use her machine for about a week, which she doesn't use it that much anyway, but just the thought, it worried me to death just the thought that what if she wants to use it, you know, so, or needs to or whatever. So anyway, I try to get everything done, including the putting the Fedora 14, having the whole backup all set up, and all the backups and lucky backups set up and tested everything before I get her the email profile. That's be the very last thing I put on the new system. Okay, I might have to write some of that down. Get put it in order. <laughs> okay, uh, I I think I already know all this stuff, but I forget it as I'm going. You know, I mean, I've done it over and over over the years, but that doesn't mean I don't get mixed up. All right, well, I'm gonna go now, and I'll come back later when I get back on it again. All right, bye. Mm -hmm.